Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 18 of the Future of Work show. So episode 18, you know, that actually means we're a legal adult. For those of you who've been following this show for the last several months, you'll know that we've uh, spoken with uh, very eminent guests across the world in areas as diverse as human robotic interaction, future of marketing and analytics, design thinking and innovation, and now the future of HR. So as someone who myself works at the interface of people and organizations and the future of HR, I'm so delighted to finally have with me a guest who has worked in HR for a very long time, but is also now at the forefront of reimagining what HR is going to mean in India for the future. And uh, for those of you who are joining us, you know that our guest is none other than Chris Shankar, who is, of course, the group HR president of, uh, of uh, Infosys and the president of the National HRD Network. So I'm very, very happy to bring him on today. Hi, Krish. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> Pleasure to be here, Shalini, and to all the viewers. Happy to oh, be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Krish, for joining us. I also realized that, uh, you know, this marks 10 years of us being, uh, you know, HR colleagues. Uh, about 10 years ago, when I had, you know, just completed my PhD and joined, you know, an HR leadership role, I had reached out to you for your advice on how HR in India was shaping up at the time. Uh, and just as we were sitting down uh, today and I was preparing for our conversation, I realized we're actually exactly at 10 years. It was probably November 2010. Oh <laughs> yeah. So, and of course, HR has uh, in some ways moved on considerably and in other ways, some of the eternal questions still remain. So I really, really am so thankful to you for coming over on our show today. and look forward to this conversation sure no I, I, you know time flies huh? it's 10 years so that's uh, phenomenal yeah. yeah so thank you i'm happy to really join in and you know i don't know how much of how much i can really talk about the future uh, mm -hmm. there are so many people talking about it and there's so much that's happening but uh, you know I'll, I'll give you my perspective and more so uh, being in the NHRDS, you know, uh, and the kind of some of the discussions we've been having, and maybe it's it's like the perspective of what could be the future of HR for India. So let me try and and see how I can make some sense out of it. No, really delighted, and I know that last year, um, August September, NHRD had released their report on the HR function and as it's going to look like in 2030. So obviously, I I know that you and many of your colleagues have put in a lot of thought into the emerging HR function in India and perhaps more broadly as well and what that might look like. So my first question is, what are what do you see as some of the big high level trends and what is really changing in the way the HR function is evolving from here on? OK. No, oh, it's it's uh, you know, we've been thinking about it. I think about a few um, you know early early this year we we sat down and looked at what are some of the things you know and we did a survey with some uh, HR CHROs and employees. But we also had COVID which came in you know and I think April mm -hmm. onwards it's like been one big inflection and therefore COVID has really kind of you know been one of those significant events which have really changed some of the some of our thinking also you know and and accelerated some of the things so so what are some of the what are the things that we see as being in the future of hr or what i see you know based on some of the work that uh, we've got from nhrd and other places i think there is uh, there are four or five trends that really come across yeah i think if you look at the the one thing that really comes out is we will see more and more uh, companies and more and more employees uh, looking at, you know, questioning and, and being and, and this whole thing about what's my purpose, you know, that's going to become more and more important because I think people realize uh, and maybe it's partly through this pandemic, but there's also the question about, you know, am I making a difference? What is my purpose? You know, that kind of a thing. So both at an organization level, 
what is the purpose of this organization and then that's that's important for people to join a company but at an individual level in terms of you know, am i finding my purpose am i doing that so that's going to be something which i think over the years will become important so that's as hr we got to keep that in mind because people now uh, feel much more socially connected you know more conscious about what is happening and 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 organizations also play that role yeah so that's i think one of the things that that may be important the second one which is really very very critical is this whole thing about uh, and this has been accelerated by this whole pandemic is about what do you think of wellness yeah uh, in the past wellness was most companies looked after wellness we had insurance you know we, we had something a dietitian looking after it we had lots of physical kind of sports and uh, things but i think that that is now becoming much more important uh, and through the pandemic people are now looking at redefining wellness you know what about mental health what about you know this whole environment of social health what about this whole psychological safety in teams so that's becoming very important so therefore this whole holistic well-being including including things like mental health psychological safety so that people can express themselves and i think that that will be another area we'll have to really work on uh, the third area which has really been much touted is this learning bit you know and this whole thing of continuous learning and and skilling i think that's really more so in technology companies because the half life of uh, a technology is is kind of reducing and therefore people have to keep learning but in every other industry because you'll see that i think over the next 5 7 years we'll see more companies transforming digitally you know more companies will become and seeing how can they become more digital so there is a digital transformation vector that's happening there is an automation vector that's happening so therefore in addition to being digital there will be automation that will come there and there are lots of new technologies coming in uh, and on top of that companies have also looked at you know changing some of the way they work so therefore continuous learning becomes very important and i think organizations have to really start thinking about how can we really do that uh, another point that comes here is really this in the sense that our own perspective of careers has has also changed you know in the past when i joined uh, careers we used to say okay i'm going to be here in this company for 10 20 years you know those days but are people thinking the same now i'm not sure yeah uh, are people probably looking at what am i going to do over the next 3 to 5 years and then maybe they'll take another call so therefore career horizons become shorter uh and with the changes in the industry becoming much more faster i mean you can't be doing the same thing for a long period you know maybe in 10 15 years you go to as they say pivot to do something else but that's where this whole thing of learning becomes very important continuous learning and how as organizations we can be ahead of the curve and also help employees kind of re- reinvent themselves you know you're doing something you know that's not going to be the future how can i how can i help you create and learn something new and reinvent yourself and move on i think that that will become uh, very important uh, i think yeah i think those those would be i think the last one i would say and this is again uh, without kind of going on to on and on is is important because if and this is the impact of the pandemic in a way yeah what is what has the pandemic done it has made us think about work it has made made us question how we are working together yeah it's questioning the role of the office uh, in itself uh, and what's going to happen now is we believe that you know in any company depending on the industry anything between 30 to 70% of the people could really work from home you know may not be every day maybe they'll come to work one or two days a week or whatever it is but it's that range of people who could really be working remotely at any point of time uh, you know and, and and again it's it's very industry specific if that is so if people are distributed what's going to happen is hr will become much more uh, for them hr will have to be lots more digital you know the way we approach things will also be lots more digital lots more of operational hr can be done remotely so the hr shared services and use of technology can be done remotely and those are the things that will re- that will determine how hr is going to change and therefore i see the role of you know the business partners becoming we've been talking about it for long but truly this could be a moment where they become true partners true coaches of leaders and teams and how they you know how they help them in their own career and and, and, and development and and the use of this whole new new what i would call as a greater focus on employee experience which is all about thinking of employees at every touch point and that experience also includes the digital experience 
that's going to be very important. So how do you really craft, look at the employee's life cycle, the different touch points he or she has, uh, uh, you know, many of those touch points are going to be digital. How can you ensure that they are the right ones? Uh, how can you bring a little more analytics for decision making? So the role of technology in redesigning employee experience will be will be important, which will also lead to a change in some of the things that HR does, and therefore, you know, the role of the business partners will also change quite a lot. So I think these are some some changes that that I see. Uh, I, I think in all of this, I think as we go forward, the role of the managers in between I see also is getting more important. Um, because they will probably have a larger span. They'll also have to take, uh, you know, ensure that they look after their teams a lot more. So we got to enable them uh, differently and help them with technology. So yeah, so those are some of the some of the changes uh, that one sees as as we go forward. Uh, partly due to the pandemic and partly due to various other things that's been happening. So to pick up on from what you said, Trish, you know. As you said, one of the huge shifts in 2020 has been the forced working remotely and therefore many discoveries happening in organizations. Perhaps the first discovery was that, oh, so much actually can happen, you know, even when you're working remotely. And I think there was certainly an initial wave of, uh, uh, even for people who were, uh, you know, very long time believers in the importance of working in an office setting, I think there was this sense of, oh, wow, there's actually a lot of work that happens even when people are working, uh, you know, fairly independently and uh, remotely. Yet over the last few months, uh, and particularly recently, uh, many managers as well as uh, HR leaders have been wondering, how does one influence the organizational culture uh, given that everyone is working so remotely and you don't have some of the inherent advantages of, you know, when you're working in a co-located office, like the Infosys campus, for instance, you know, just the campus says a lot about the kind of organization it is and, you know, the openness, the greenery, uh, uh, you know, the values sort of are embedded in the campus itself. And then, of course, the fact that when you're working co-located in the same physical premise, there is so much more opportunity to observe mirror behavior uh, and have the tons of informal interactions that obviously they have to be far more intentionally managed. So just wondering what are your thoughts on uh, how both leaders, uh, business leaders and uh, HR leaders uh, uh, can influence culture in what is today a very different environment? Yeah, no, I think that's that's a very good point. Uh, I mean, let's step back and say, OK, you know, you're right. I think when we when we all shifted to uh, remote working or work from home, we found that, you know, quickly a uh, large number of people started kind of, you know, enjoying it. They, they kind of, you know, and our engagement levels shot up, you know, clearly went up everywhere, all across those people kind of got a a kind of a sense of something new, a sense of purpose, a sense of you know working together. But all that was possible because they knew each other. There was an understanding, you know, as I say, there was some amount of social capital that was built up over the years, and that's helped them do it. Um, and you're right. After some time, I think people are finding now that yes, I like the flexibility. I like you know that I can kind of juggle around things. But uh, there are other things like there is this blur, there is, you know, the work and home is the boundaries are blurring. And therefore, you know, while I may get a couple of hours off in between, but my calls go and stretch late in the evening or night. So therefore, that's one of the things. And how do I manage things at home, kids, education and other things also at the same time, you know, given this. So those are those are some of the challenges that are coming up. Uh, but clearly, if you look at what will make teams work well, uh, in a remote world. If you just think, let's say, two, three years down the road, if you want to really get teams to work remotely well, what is needed? I think three or four things are needed. Only one is, I think, they need this complete understanding between the teams. Yeah, They need to know who's doing what, etc. So a lot of social connect, who can I approach for what? So that's number one. Number two, they should have complete clarity in what they should be doing, you know, and, and their work. And if they don't, then they, they kind of waste time and they'll feel a little bit uh, cut out. So therefore, lots more clarity about work. 
uh, a lot more of connection in terms of you know in some way getting connected to each other and and uh, and i would say a lot more trust in the team you know and the manager has to build that kind of a trust and therefore he has to also he or she has to empower teams you know you can you got to be you can't control too much you got to delegate and you got to you know trust them a little more so those are important for those teams to work and i think that's the kind of culture that we need to build uh and and I, i think how can we build the culture i think in the past the, the office proved a great setting for building this connection and culture right the physical settings were artifacts the 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 leaders coming together uh the buildings the, the the training programs that you do the onboarding sessions the pictures the canteen all of these were at of artifacts which really help build some kind of a culture uh i think if i look at it going forward they they will still have to play a part and therefore it's not that they come every day but maybe you come for certain days and ensure that there is that physical bonding because that's much more uh, stronger the way it is but we also have as as organization find out how we can build culture in a digital way i would say more presence of leaders digitally more presence of leaders connecting with people more communication so we start building a culture also uh, way in a, in a remote digital way so that, that's the other thing that we've got to do uh, and i i think as the chart the other four or five things we got to come up you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, how do you think is the role of managers in building this trust in the teams the role of managers in in, in saying how can they get a great connection and providing more clarity and that's one thing we got to start training managers to do a lot more um, number 2 we got to really start thinking of culture in a how do you build culture in a hybrid environment so what elements of the culture do you want to get people together physically once in a way to really you know nurture because then office now becomes a place where you come together you bond you ideate you know you, you strengthen the culture and the values and then that's important so you got to think of that what signature things that, that you can think of there but also culture in a digital way you know what are some things what artifacts we can do so that's the other thing there i think the role of community is become very important so therefore i think how do you as as leaders how can we build larger communities where people sitting at home working can tap into those communities digitally you know it could be in sports it could be in this but it could be you know different things you know uh so therefore that's the other one that we got to start building so i think if if you look at it the culture part will have to be strengthened a lot more as we go to the future some new elements have to be built elements of inclusiveness elements of trust etc and to do that we got to really think of architecting it in a setting which is both the office and the digital but also think of the role of the manager in doing that so those are some of the key things that we'll have to uh, look as we as we strengthen the culture because it's important to build those sets of you know that culture and and those values as people work more digital i think it will become much more important yeah. which now thanks for uh, you know sh- sharing that because i think it's absolutely true i think uh, the process of building culture is different in a digital environment of course there's some things which are always common but there are also many things that are really really different like all the recent research on what is it that employees and their managers are finding works when they are working in a virtual setting include things like having channels of communication with fast turnaround you know so being able to ping someone and get you know maybe a 2 minute response to something that can't wait for or rather shouldn't wait for the next scheduled call or next scheduled you know zoom session uh, so that turns out to be quite important another thing that turns out to be important is uh, employers checking in with employees at a personal level to see how they're doing uh i guess the you know there are these nuances which are different and as organizations are experiencing uh, a very different world some of these nuances are becoming clearer that to build engagement in a digital environment will require a certain set of behavior which is uh, you know more intentional than perhaps uh, you know the more uh, uh, i would say the more natural uh, way when we're all you know in the same physical setting so uh, yeah. that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense i'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, you know something that 
at one level appears a little bit of a contradiction. So as you said, um, uh, and all the uh, studies on what the future of HR and future of work in organizations, uh, uh, you know, where it's headed, there is an overwhelming emphasis, increasing emphasis on things like purpose, culture, um, and well-being, you know? So there's a lot of emphasis on many of these much softer aspects of, of working, you know, in an organization and the kind of uh, factors that are inherently motivating. But at the same time, uh, we seem to be headed into uh, what might be either a mild or a stronger economic downturn. And uh, as of course you know, uh, when there is a downturn and you know jobs are fewer than applicants, uh, there are other things that take priority. And you know, even from a basic uh, Maslow's hierarchy model. Uh, just having job security and having food on the table and your EMI is paid, et cetera, et cetera, becomes increasingly important. So how do you think uh, some of these counter pulls of the future, on the one hand, um, uh, what seems to be an economic downturn, on the other hand, the increasing automation, which will put pressure on jobs, and uh, you know, how will this all play out with an increasing need from both organizations to focus on culture so that you know they are able to lead without close supervision and a need from people and this generation itself to have meaning at work. How do you see these different somewhat opposing pulls play out? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a, it's a fair point. Uh, but you know, I think if you really look at um, uh, post pandemic yeah um, what does it mean i think many, many industries are slowly you know coming back to their uh, to whatever you know it's been a dip and i think many people talk of a v shaped curve or a u shaped or a l shaped or whatever it is but i think the shape is definitely going up for for most businesses equally what the pandemic has done is also created lots of newer businesses you know most companies in a, in a, say say for example most companies are thinking about how can I become more digital? Yeah, how can I digitize or uh, the growth in the e-commerce and the you know those kind of things have all have grown up, uh, have grown actually. So there are newer businesses that are coming up. So yes, it, it's going to be a year of in a way, uh, you know, I would say it's a tight business environment for a year. But one can see lots of green shoots. You know, a lot of newer businesses coming. Uh, some of the businesses are kind of uh, coming back to their full strength and I think all that will happen. So I think it's it's a transition, but I'm sure in the next six months, one would see, you know, most of the economy completely bouncing back, hopefully. And yeah? that's what I, you know, one, one would sense there. So, the, so, but the point is, yes. Now, why would things like purpose, well-being, and this are, become important? Because I think at this time, that's partly because you know every organization uh, is is really trying to ensure that it does its best best for its employee yeah i mean we we and this is a tough time every every organization feel that the employees have gone out of the way to help and i think the organizations also want to really ensure that they do their best you know in whatever way it is whether it's providing wellness support whether it is providing all kinds of things so therefore i think that's a that's a very strong thinking you know that i've seen all across uh number one number two i think the, the as we go into the future when we look at it i think organization will also start looking at saying okay how do i really build something you know how do i start getting this team together a lot more and i think you know this this pandemic acts as like a kind of a burning platform for saying listen we've all come together now we got to really build on it so therefore it it becomes a rallying cry for most organizations and i think we also look at you know uh, some kind of a larger vision and that's where this whole thing of purpose and other things comes very important so i think in a way uh, that will become more important for us really get people mobilized you know that will also be very important to get uh, getting people fo focused on the future and i think that's what also people want you know i think it will become very critical for most companies to really start thinking 
about uh, about the shared vision about what is the, what they see the future and start talking about it and getting more people kind of you know uh, energized by it so um, this downturn is there but i think there's also a movement for really thinking about being more optimism so i think that's one thing that we will have to see most companies do you know be more thinking about the future what are the opportunities there'll be new businesses that you will you will kind of find so therefore talking about those new businesses there'll be new opportunities for many businesses so i think that's what and as we keep focusing on it as we keep trying to drive that uh, thing then you will find that the economy will soon uh, get back to normal so i don't know if i've answered your question <laughs> but it's it's like you know uh, i think this while this is a it's like a, a kind of you know as i say it's it's, it's one of those uh, one of those kind of trauma inducing situations right and i think and if you look at the traditional thinking of trauma i mean normally at least about 50% of people who go through a trauma uh, get get you know what they can they get a kind of a new lease of life they feel you know lots more positive and there is something they want to do differently and they kind of you know that's about 50% and there'll be some who may still be stuck in that and there'll be some who will still be you know uh, uh, be a little more uh, hit by the by this whole trauma and all that so but this time is also a time for us to really uh, think about the future get people together and that's where this whole thing about values culture purpose all of them become more important as as rallying cries for us to really move forward yeah no i i i am absolutely by the way with you on the increasing importance of this and just from a pure organizational science perspective you know there is this um, one of my absolute favorite articles is one called markets bureaucracies and clans which is really about how do you get people to do anything <laughs> and you know there are three primary levers market which is rewards you know you pay them you compensate and you reward them for doing something bureaucracy is the process the rule book the you know the technology is also a process and you know that itself uh, encourages some behaviors and the third is the clan which is culture you know the softer piece the purpose the meaning uh, uh, and as organizations become on the one hand more dispersed uh and on the other hand need to move very fast it is the third lever which actually uh, is the strongest because that's the one which can enable decentralized working and can enable people to take actions in the same general direction very very fast so i completely by the way my question was just about what you know the counter pulls to an economic downturn and you know the pressure on jobs because of automation with what at at one level might feel like okay well that's a different kind of conversation so i'm just going to take a few comments here we've got oh we've got a lot of comments uh uh so shefali has a question how employee engagement as a domain has shifted in the virtual mode and what can one do to improve the virtual experience yeah and it's a very, very interesting question and i think it's something that we're all learning we're all learning a lot more um i think you know i would i would look at three uh, shefali three key things from what i have seen yeah one is longer term you have to really think of um uh, i would say you know we were looking at it, the three c's or the four c's but there are four key things that is there i think the first one is clarity you know what kind of clarity that you can provide to people because the more remote you are clarity about body you want to work is very important you know and sometimes the, and that's one of the things that we got to start providing the second one is this connections you know a lot more time people may feel left out or you know so therefore how do you get simple things maybe you can say listen every day or every week we'll have a call we'll meet or something like that where people know what is happening using technologies like slack or uh, teams or whatever where you put on what's happening etc or, or a quick stand up call so that kind of a connection is very important uh, the, the third one is really this whole thing about uh, have some kind of a cadence and, communi and communication yeah so that's like you know lots more communication leadership communication etc uh, but clearly a, a set cadence really helps people plan when they're all these are some things that i do and the last fourth one is really this whole thing about building 
what I would call as trust. Yeah. Um, how do you create a lot more trust within the teams? And that's where the managers play a big role. Then, you know, let people talk openly you know, uh, and, and create and then build the safety, the psychological safety. So those are at the core of what you need to see as engaged teams. Yeah, that's number one. Number two is really if I'm sitting working here, I'm going to I'm I'm going to be interacting a lot more digitally in many things. So if I look at an employee experience, I've got to look at all my touch points and say, listen, am I really, you know, am I is it easy for me to do my work? Is it easy for me to really, you know, do things that I used to do, you know, uh, connect with people or get some facilities or, you know, sort out my IT or whatever it is. Therefore, all kinds of touch points. Learning. Am I, am I getting great learning online? So therefore, look at employee experience all across all the key touch points and see is, is it easy for people to do that digital? Because those will be key moments that will also determine uh, what you need to do. I think the third part, which is now very important, I would say, for engagement, is this whole thing about wellness. Yeah. Uh, we've spoken about the teams, we've spoken about this whole digital experience, but this wellness and 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 this thing is very important. Therefore, what do we need to do is, is the third area that we need to we need to think of. So, what else can we do in a digital world? I think building building strong communities. Therefore, you have lots of connections. Uh, building ways in which teams and telling managers how they can really work with teams and from HR looking at our employee experiences, you know, including the digital touch points and seeing how you can, you know, uh, look at them and, and see that that's great. So I think these are some things we need to do much more, uh, you know, in a virtual world compared to what we used to do in a, in a physical world. I think. Very well said. Uh, Sanjay says work from home is helping organizations become more apolitical as physical face time encourages a toxic environment that's an interesting observation what do you think um, krish do you think that would be the case well it's like you know <laughs> it depends on the on the organizations the culture the boss a, a various things yeah um ideally yes if if things are much more objective if things are much more uh, thing then yes a typical uh, a, a political thing would be there but equally you know uh, few you also get work done through your influence yeah and i think you know that also shows your entrepreneurship in a way because then we are all social beings you know we cannot be machines looking at things there and therefore we also have to inspire people we also have to really kind of you know uh, influence them in a in a different way uh, and i think you know that's also critical you know yeah, you have to do it in a non-political way, but the role of influence, the role of inspiration is still important. Yeah. So therefore, uh, we it, it's just that we got to match both of those. Those are good, but we got to ensure they're done in the right intent and spirit so that they don't become political. Yeah. And I think, uh, but your your hypothesis is right. If you're becoming more thing, then yes. If you if decisions are going to be much more based on uh objective data uh then yes you may become less apolitical but it also has this downside about you know you, you can you know where is this whole thing of influence inspiration etc so therefore that's important for many of us and you know and uh in a way you, do, you don't know it but half half what we're doing is through an inspiration half what we're doing is through you know people and i think that's that's the hidden thing that pulls us uh we've got to really keep that uh, going but ensure that that also uh, is done in the right way and not political. It's an interesting observation, Sanjay, by the way. I think uh, because as you know, you yourself were saying, uh, for working virtually, uh, much greater transparency, objectivity, information flows, you know, all these become Im important at a much higher order of, uh, of requirement. So uh, some of those maybe forces of uh, political behavior get sort of reduced. Uh, but of course, there is then the whole challenge of how do you continue to influence people in the direction with you need to be helped. So I think that's a really interesting counterpoint. Anurag, hi, thanks for joining. Can't agree more how companies contribute to wellness and safety will become a key employer brand attribute from now on. Uh, very true. Sridhar says, uh, Krish, as a coach, one thing that I'm continuing to hear over the past six months from my clients is the blurring of lines between work and personal time. You're up, I think, Krish, you spoke about it. But what do you think organizations can actually do? 
<laughs> yeah. See, I think there is, you know, I was just speaking to a few people yesterday. And I think there is this, there is a greater flexibility there. What has this done is there are many people who have, uh, I was speaking to our teams in Chandigarh and they're saying that about 75% of our people are not in Chandigarh. They've gone to their, they've gone to their hometowns, whether it's in Uttarakhand or in you know, Punjab or Himachal or wherever it is. So they're there. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, they've got some flexibility. You know, you don't need to really, you know, there are there is some free time you get in between, etc. But equally, because you know, you you because of that, you also have calls which are set up late in the evening, saying, "Well, you may be available," so therefore, there is it's call that is set up. I think, I, I think that's what it is. Therefore, and this becomes a little more tougher, let's say, for people who've got to do a lot more caregiving at home, maybe women, etc. And therefore, it becomes uh, tough, uh, sometimes tough. So, what can organizations do? I think it's the key thing is we've got to leave it to the teams to set what is the right thing for them. And to mandate things don't, don't really work because I think everyone understands they're all in the same boat, as they say. And, and if you leave it to the team saying, listen, you set up your own norms. What is it? You know, have a cadence of meetings, which is clear. Have some kind of a thing. And, and what we encourage as organization is to have times of the day where there are no calls. You know, let's say, you know, maybe you don't know for some two days after whatever it is. So you can think of a couple of days where you don't have calls or meetings so people have more time to do what they want to do. Uh, so those are some of the things that we can do. So we encourage our people to kind of, you know, uh, adopt some of those practices so that you kind of, you know, I think these are norms that teams have to set. Uh, as organizations, we encourage our leaders to do those, uh, talk about it a lot more, see what is suited for people. Uh, and there, there are some, like, for example, we've had a chat and, and a couple of women in my team said, don't do any meetings from 9 to 11. Let's do it anything after 11, you know, and therefore it gives us more time to get things done, etc. Which is great because now we know that those are times you got to have. Uh, so I think talking within teams really helps you uh, kind of you know, decide what really uh, will work. So more give free the teams to see what it is because it's all flexible now there are some some non-negotiables you can say listen we all have to be available for some cause of meetings this time these periods sometimes you can say okay let's not disturb each other um tell people to take days off more connections with people i think uh, those will all be those will all help thanks krish i'm going to take you a little bit into the future i mean 2020 has been such an unusual year that uh, uh, I think we could spend actually hours just speaking about the challenges 2020 has thrown up because they're so unusual. You know, nobody would have uh, thought about some of these issues last year if we were having this conversation. And this year has uh, uh, had extremely unusual challenges. But one of the things I want to ask you is about the changing nature of HR jobs itself. Uh, NHRD, and I know that you were part of releasing the study of what uh, HR leadership roles of the future are going to look like. Uh, there was also a study by Cognizant, you know, very well, uh, very often quoted study, 21 future HR jobs, etc. What are your thoughts on what's really going to change in the way the HR function itself is structured? Well, I think, um, see, so what's going to happen? One is there is this role of Technology is going to be much more bigger in HR, yeah. And I think, uh, how do you really look at that? People are distributed. Uh, we got to have great uh, technology all across. Therefore, the role of technology becomes very important. And technology will become important in every job, you know. And therefore, this whole technology people interface also become important for HR to look at. Uh, as people are distributed, analytics becomes very important because you know, and we're all working remotely. And uh, what kind of data do I have, you know, about my own team, about myself, about our work, you know, uh, and therefore, how can we take decisions better? So therefore, analytics becomes important. So as I see this, I think there will be, uh, and I already spoke about this whole thing of when, you, when you're getting employee experience, and now I think if employees are spending lots more time digitally, uh, you got to look at that employee experience more at the digital level as well as employee experience, you know, overall in terms of whether I'm getting onboarded well, whether I'm getting a learning or promotion, but also this whole digital experience. So if I put these together, I think HR in the future will have uh, employee experience will become very important. And this is this team will start thinking about a lot more about 
this whole design of digital interfaces and how you know how how we are providing the right service to hr a lot more of hr can become operational and can become remote and therefore you may still have your hr shared services to many things for example if you look at career counseling you know in the past if hr business partner was involved some level of career counseling need not be done by the hr business partner it can be done by a team of hr people who are sitting remotely you know so those are some things that we can kind of you once you understand the context you can start doing it uh, analytics becomes important in a way it becomes as they say a coe of coes because every every center of expertise you have your rewards your od your learning whatever but then analytics becomes the coe of coe because you got to really bring all of this and start saying you know what it is so those are some things that i think will become more important newer coes and employee experience your shared services becoming more technology driven uh your analytics becoming very important very much uh needed to determine you know to see how your managers can do their jobs better so analytics in the flow of work as i say or to help people in decision making so we got to start thinking about it much more um and i think your business partners then play a much greater role in looking at you know people uh and teams and seeing how how the teams are working and coaching managers a lot more and the last part is this thing is this thing this focus on wellness and i think wellness and while in the past we had there but now that becomes clearly a big role within hr looking after wellness uh and, and wellness expands you know it's not the traditional thing now it expands to uh lots more mental health you know how do you look at emotional health what kind of communities we are building so therefore you have an expanded view of wellness that will also become a, a kind of an expanded coe as we go forward so that's those are some other things that one one would see in hr things will change much more so therefore the role of the business hr and the role and our closeness to business and people will will become critical so yeah those are some thoughts actually um, so i really want to ask you about how you see the uh, role of hr in enabling technology both within hr so hr technology and in enabling an interface of uh, you know humans and different technologies so uh, one of the things we you know we've discovered um, uh, partly through this show and partly otherwise as well is that each of the technologies have nuances which are their own so for instance we had uh, we had a few conversations around human robotic interactions and uh human robotic interactions have nuances which are quite different from say uh human chatbot interactions or human ai interactions for one human robotic interactions are social interactions so humans tend to behave with robots in ways that in at least some aspects mirror their behavior with other humans like the desire to compete or collaborate uh to judge a robot uh, positively or negatively in a manner which they wouldn't necessarily you know judge another piece of technology on so one of the things that is emerging is that each of the technology interfaces has its own nuances in the way uh humans interact with that technology and i am noticing both in your own nhrd report and you know in cognizant study of jobs of the future that there are quite a few hr roles which are uh, which are likely to emerge to enable this kind of coupling of humans with a specific aspect of technology which understands you know what what the nuances of that particular dyad actually look like um so would love to hear your thoughts around how technology is going to impact uh, both hr as a function hr technology and hr's facilitation of machines humans across other aspects of the organization <laughs> i think there's there's a lot written about all this you know um, i think it's it's a little bit many jobs you see you know like for example emotion coach for robots you know emotion coach for chatbots and stuff like that i think it's all there it's good but i think uh personally i feel some of those are a little bit um you know uh, a little bit all being done but it's not you know i, I won't put that that in a scale that will really disrupt the whole of hr you know it's not uh, some of those are there but what is the role of technology i think see 
uh, as more and more technology comes in, I think what we in HR need to do is to ensure that what is that impact of technology on people, you know? And I think it is about how do you really ensure that if there is that there is a little more of what you call as the technology enables or amplifies people rather than kind of you know controls them. And I think most technologies that we see now are enabling people to do more, you know, and are enabling that. So therefore, that's one of the things that we got to keep in uh, keep in mind. Coming back, I think if you were to look at what HR needs to do in this overall thing of the impact technologies, really think about clearly the role of automation across the company you know how are we how are we reskilling people what are the kind of a thing so therefore it's much more proactive thinking about how technology can be used how technology can be harnessed yeah so that's strategically that's what we need to really think about uh, in a way uh, coming and, and and the other parts there is technology and its impact on wellness which i've already spoken about yeah. because i think that's thing in terms of you know screen time distraction you know health effects uh, all of those so therefore we lot to start thinking about it so more one area is the impact of yeah. technology on jobs and how do you get people ready for it the other is the impact of technology on people and therefore how do you really look at that especially from a wellness and you know and using that so those are the two key areas that we've got to really look at for for the for across then i come within hr and i think within hr there will be as i said there will be lots of uh, chatbots or things that you design which will be needed but you got to ensure that those you know to, to create this whole employee experience but all of that will need to be designed in a way which really is more empathetic intuitive you know uh, there is uh, the understand uh, human beings and emotions and that's some other thing that will go into the whole design design of various chatbots and stuff like that so we got to start uh, thinking about it that anyways is there um i think we also uh, you know when i really look at it technology is not going to completely change what we're doing you know i don't think so because i think it is going to continue to amplify some stuff will be there but it's still where we are what we bring to the table the role of hr gets more amplified so i don't think it's going to you know uh, say okay i'm going to you know, tomorrow HR is going to do a completely different thing. No, because I think the, the core things that we are doing are not going to continue. It may get, some of them may get automated. Some of them we've got to really plan so that it's done better. Um, so I, I, I look at technology in a, in a more proactive, more helpful way for HR. So therefore, the experiences, design uh, HR technology that helps employees do it well use lots more uh, self-service so people are much more empowered in how they're doing and uh, ensure that you know uh, while you're doing all that you know it's intuitive it looks at people as people i think then you you'll, you'll probably have the right technology there no very well said i think this whole personalization of employee experience has become a really important theme and uh, you know, uh, even some years back, uh, you know, people were much more comfortable with uh, having much larger cohorts, for instance, or even, uh, you know, programs that worked across the board for everyone. But there is a strong desire for personalization of employee experience, which is part of this whole, uh, you know, focus on employee experience coming center stage. Uh, in the conversation around HR and its evolution. So I'm gonna take a few questions now. Um, Shailesh uh, Goyal says, some organizations are focused on measuring productivity of their workforce and talks on best way to do that management without offending micromanaging people. What do you think of the whole phenomenon? So I, I think Shailesh is asking, what are ways to measure productivity without, you know, sort of, offending micromanaging or like being in your face too much what are your thoughts see i think in the end uh, productivity is all about the ultimate outcome yeah i think as long as for example if you're whatever you're supposed to deliver to your clients are delivered then i think you're being productive you know whatever are your timeline so i think it's it is about it it is you know i think whenever you look at it there are various ways you know you start saying is the outcome delivered so that's 
number one. Number two, you say, okay, what are the activities to lead to that outcome? Are they on time? So therefore, you really look at it. And then the last part is the efforts are people putting in that effort. So I think you 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 know at this point, if if you have a way of really looking at those things, what are the end outcomes? Where are they? How are they? Kind of a thing, and have a good discussion. And as long as you know, and, and therefore that focus and and good discussion on that really will tell people where we are you know are we are we improving on our outcomes our various whatever is a commitment you know whether it's an sla whether it's a revenue per person or whatever where we are on it then you can say okay there are activities behind it and then you can go and say okay which activities are kind of not really you know uh, taking more time what we can do differently and therefore think about it so i think that's the way to really look at productivity uh, in a way you know more uh, I think everybody's that that's a, in a way, uh, as you said, Silesh, uh, non-intrusive way, um, and and look at it more as a way of saying, okay, we are now coming together together to look at it to see how we can rethink it, how we can improve it, and see how we can take it, uh, make it better, and remove any any friction to productivity. I think that's the key thing. And as leaders, we got to say our job is to say my job is to remove any friction to your productivity, any friction to what you have to deliver. And I think if you put in that kind of a lens, then I think you'll have much more productive discussions and saying what can we do differently. A lot of time is not about people's efforts. It's a lot of time is the processes, it's the activities. I think the redesign of that will give you a lot more. And this is a good time to rethink that and rethink that with the OD hat. So this is going to you know what uh, Shalati and and co and, and and this is more a OD kind of a thing saying how can I now come and improve productivity? What can we do differently now? We are now remote. Is there some things we are thinking? What are assumptions that we can change differently so that you know our outcomes are uh, better quality, more and you know in shorter time that way you'll be able to rethink. <laughs> Uh, Santosh uh, says, uh, resilience and learning agility are the two aspects coming out very clearly for survival and thriving in the future. Absolutely. I'm sure that is the case. It is rapid learning and no more learning at your own pace, which is the basic premise of our LMS. How do you visualize L&D function in the digital world leading to engagement? Does L&D... Um... LND leading to engagement? Is that what the question was? In a digital, yeah. yeah. How do you visualize LND function in a digital world leading to engagement? No, I think, see, learning is completely now. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the most fascinating things of changes that's going yeah. to happen. Here. If you look at it, and I, and I look at myself and many others, you know, where, how do we learn? A lot of our learning is now not really you know a lot of learning is through for example you know some some interesting articles i see on twitter you know and something that i kind of up by somebody saying wow this is interesting and you read and you get some ideas there and i think many people learn from other sources a lot more and all of them are digital you know in a way uh, i think so therefore there is a little bit of this what you call this broad learning which really expands your mind, expands your perspective, it gives you new ideas that I think can be picked up in a more digital. And that is more serendipitous, more self-driven, you know, and that's that's a key learning that is there. Then you go to learning, which is more deep learning, learning that is needed to improve your skill, you know, improve what you need to do. I think there you need much more, what you call sharper focus. And I think uh, one of the things in the past, I don't know if you guys have seen it, E-learning was not a great favorite of many of us. You know, many companies in India had a lot of e-learning, but they never had people doing it. Unless you mandated saying, unless you do it, you will not get this. People won't do e-learning. Uh, and therefore, that was a little bit. But I think now that's going to change. People have now, I've seen in my own organization in the last two quarters, that the number, double the number of people doing various learning. So therefore, people now are, therefore, learning will yeah. become more digital. But you got to do it in a right way. You know, digital can't be sitting in a class as no. You got to kind of design it properly, not more than let's say an hour of things, then make them do certain things, then come back again. So it's a very well designed digital learning which has got some kind of individual study, some group communities that you build, and some work that you do. So all those three have to come together for people to learn. This community of social learning is very important. 
if you don't design it as your whole e-learning, that will go away. Because I don't think people are just going to be sitting and learning unless they have to write an exam. They're not going to do that. So you've got to create that. So I think learning, the way we think of learning technology will change a lot. Yeah, uh, You'll see uh, we have to redesign it, have lots more digital, but great learning through social communities. You've got to build those communities and some work and giving them time for them to practice. You know? So those are things. And then build that loop in. So, so that so deep learning will re, we undergo a change. We got to think about it using more digital uh, ways and, and digital communities to do it. Uh, but clearly, this is one area which will change a lot. Even even your leadership development, I think lots more digital, lots more coaching, lots more talking to people. And we found I found that in the last six months. We've been able to have more discussions with our leaders this virtually than we could do in the real world, in the physical world. Because in the physical world, while you could all get into a team and talk about people, it was always lack of somebody coming, going, this, that. But now we've got lots more focus there. So I think there is a great plus to this digital thing. And we've got to build on it in a way also. So yes, learning will change a lot. Uh, I think. Just to summarize what I said, for the broad learning or the perspective learning, give them more free time, give them more resources for people to really look from anywhere they want, but then you know ensure that they build that perspective. But the deeper learning is where we got to be much more conscious in designing what it is and and, and designing it in a more uh, thoughtful way, you know, uh, and using social learning at the heart of it also. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. In fact, uh, this year, twenty twenty has been an absolute revolution for online learning. Uh, and Uncube itself, uh, by the way, we are also launching a program on HR for the future, so skills that HR needs to develop for the future since our area of focus is the future of work. And uh, we are seeing so many new skills and uh, you know mindsets become important over the next few years. So it's been a huge shift. And the online learning space itself has some of these different nuances so it ranges from you know uh, async programs where you know record recorded uh, lessons which you can access at your own convenience at your own pace to a combination of async lessons and social communities and perhaps uh, you know one on one sessions so there is this whole range emerging of on the one hand uh, you know, uh, methodologies which reach many people and have the flexibility which some people find helpful to a deep personalization of the same content. Uh, so online learning this year has had a huge, huge revolution pretty um, much across the board. So I yeah. realized- and, and, and for HR people, just to add on for HR people, I think you've got to join communities like NHRD, you know, because that gives you a great opportunity <laughs> Firstly, to interact with people, you know, and I've seen, you know, I've seen lots of young people in Bangalore being part of many of our activities and they've, they've learned a lot and they contribute a lot. Uh, and it just that gives you that extra perspective. You talk to people of all levels, you talk to people across industries, you, you participate in projects. So I think a lot of our learning will also come by being actively involved in the community. You know, I think, you know, you, all of us have to spend that time. I think just spending, I mean, I'm talking to Shalini now, you know, but I'm learning also. I'm thinking learning also in a way. And therefore, the more we spend a little bit in within the HR community, I think you contribute, but you also learn. So I think that's a great way to really build this, this community forward. Very well said. Very well said. In fact, this year seems to be a move towards digital communities across the board. So uh, we're seeing it everywhere. Uh, humans are social. So, you know, the digital format is just another avenue of expressing the same social needs. Anshuman has a question for you. Hi, Anshuman. Good to see you here. Uh, while some of us older ones have invent, invested years into knowing people or developing social skills, the same opportunity is not now available to the younger generation or those joining now. How do we handle this situation? I think many people have asked this question, right? That what about people who are coming on board remotely and haven't actually met anyone from their team or the organization? Yeah, so no, the point is, as I said, um, you have to really think of uh, 
clearly there is a lot of learning if i look at myself there's a lot of learning from other people you know uh, I, if i look at myself 10 20 years back i learned a lot from my bosses meetings and various things you know therefore that's that's great learning um and i also interact with people a lot more and you know you you pick up uh, and you build relationships so therefore there is a great value to those relationships that you build now in a remote world i think we've got we've got to work within one constraint you know try and see firstly how can you replicate that and i think that's you know setting up calls meetings doing one on one so do the same but that the positive here is you get more availability of people so therefore use that and try and you know i would say for people there is use the availability of people set up time talk you know i think people reach out saying listen i want to hear something from you talk to me about this and there will be people who will do that so that's how you start building start building that relationship even virtually but as things open up i think this we've got to go and meet people you know uh, we got to go back to offices or meet somewhere else uh, but that kind of talking meeting again uh, we, you know hope it's not more than 6 months down the road uh we should be able to that that's important i i, I would say that you know that that's in, that can't be replaced completely we can substitute part of it through virtual interactions but as leaders i think we also have to spend more time talking to people we have to be more visible we have to also uh you know uh, find out one on one opportunities and you know coachable moments digitally also so that way we'll try and we should try and uh, reach out to more people Right. Oh, wonderful and i think this is a question shared across organizations actually this concern of whether how do we enculture new joiners so krish i realize we're at the end of our time uh, really thank you so much it was so wonderful having you on the show i mean i wish we could just continue for hours but obviously <laughs> that's not good that's not possible or fair to you but it was so wonderful to have this conversation thank you so much for joining the pleasure thank you i hope it was useful <laughs> uh, whatever uh, some of my thoughts but uh, happy to really spend this time thank you always thank you so much so i hope you really really enjoyed this show uh, krish is such a wonderful human being and someone whom i've looked up to for years uh, now this whole month and the month of december we have a spotlight on hr and what the evolving hr function might look like so if this is a topic of interest to you please be sure to tune in we have a conversation uh, most of the time once a week though next week is diwali week so it's going to move to the week after that uh, do stay tuned and as i said uh, ancube is also creating a program for hr business partners to have the skills and insights that hr needs for the future uh, so with that uh, have a great uh, day ahead and see you next time thank you